Do we have Marsha? We do not yet have Marsha. That's a great point. Recording is on. Recording is on. Let's begin then. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the April 13th, 2023 hybrid meeting of the TRPA hearings officer. I will call the meeting to order right now. My name is Andrew Strain, and I'll serve as the hearings officer today. Item two on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. I'll ask the staff if we have any suggested changes to the agenda. There's no changes. Okay. No changes. Very good. I'll approve the agenda as it's been posted. Item three are the public interest comments. These are for no action. Any member of the public who wishes to address the hearings officer on any agenda item that's not listed as an announcement of appeal rights or as a public hearing item or on any other matter may do so at this time. However, please note that public comments on the announcement of appeal rights or on public hearing items will be taken up at the time that those agenda items are heard. The hearings officer is prohibited by law from taking immediate action on or discussing issues raised by the public that are not listed on this agenda. At this point, I will ask Jessica to look for a show of hands from anyone who's participating who would like to address the hearings officer as I've just described it in public interest comments. Jessica? There are no hands raised. Very good. Seeing as now we have no public interest comments for no action, we'll move on to item four, which is the announcement of appeal rights. I want to let everyone who's listening today know that any decision of the hearings officer is appealable to the TRPA governing board within 21 days of the hearings officer decision. The application fee and the appeal application can be found on the TRPA's website. Item five are our public hearing items. We have one today. Item 5A is the Tahoe Marina Owners Association Bowie Field Expansion. Located at 270 North Lake Boulevard in Placer County, California. The assessor's parcel numbers are 094-500-022 and 094-540-006. The TRPA file number is Moore 2021-1839. Matt Miller is our project planner for this item. Matt, will you please uh, begin with a brief presentation? Of course, Andrew, thank you. This is uh, Matt Miller, uh, Senior Environmental Specialist uh, with TRPA for the record. Um, so the applicant is the uh, Tahoe Marina, Marina Owners Association. Um, uh, this is a, uh, a homeowners association um, that serves some residential units um, on the shores of Lake Tahoe. Uh, they are proposing, the applicant is proposing uh, to expand their existing buoy field uh, from 10 mooring buoys uh, to 14 mooring buoys. 
uh, with four allocations that they received in the uh, 2020 and 2021 morning lotteries, so four total. Um, the, the proposed buoy field expansion does meet all of our development standard, all tier phase development standards, and are they okay there? Yeah. Okay. Um, and buoys are allowed accessory structures in the uh, Placer County Tahoe Basin Area Plan in the Greater Ohio City Mixed Use Neighborhood Tourist Subdistrict. And so this project also does include uh, 32 square feet of fish habitat mitigation um, for the impacts of the proposed uh, buoy blocks. Any other comments or information on that? Um, you know, there. This is a pretty straightforward project. They are expanding the the additional buoys will be lakeward of the the buoy field. Um, they are at the furthest extent of um, where they'd be allowed to be per our development standards. Uh, that's 600 feet out uh, from 6220 from Lake Bottom Elevation 6220. Um, they, um, else. So that it, you know, it is a it is you know kind of a unique area. Um, it is at the outlet of the Truckee River, um, so it is a slightly a cove environment, as you can see as well. They are on the, what you're seeing here on the site plan, uh, they are on the north side of the uh, lower Truckee River. Close to the dam? Yes. And they are flanked on the um, northeast side by Commons Beach um, in Tahoe City. And where, Matt, will the... Fish habitat mitigation or restoration um, take place. I, can't, I can see it from here. Mm -hmm. I, I can't to, quite see it on the on my copy. Uh, Mr. Hearings Officer, this is Jan Briscoe. We can Good tell you, hi. We can tell you that the mitigation is around the the anchor blocks. We're going to be stacking rock to provide feed and escape cover habitat. Appreciate that, Jan. I was just getting the site plan up so I could see the detail. Um, yeah. So um, as Jan uh, Briscoe just said, she's the consultant uh, representing the applicants. Uh, they are doing. Um, uh, rock cobble uh, around the base of the um, concrete blocks uh, for the buoys. Uh, so to be spread out um, around the bases of those blocks. And it's kind of a, a useful pattern because the um, because the uh, uh, marine contractor is able to place them at the same time they're hooking up the buoy chain and everything else. Um, so they will spread cobble out that is, uh, they'll serve as feed and cover habitat um, for the fish. These are being discrete. Uh, patches or areas of it? Um, it'll be around the blocks, equaling um, eight, four square feet for each, um, sorry, eight square feet for each uh, buoy block. And that would be on the new? On the new buoys. The new buoy blocks and not on the uh, existing ones. That's correct. Um, there's no um, fish habitat mitigation required for the existing blocks okay. uh, that are currently in place. And does it surround the entire perimeter of the four new blocks? Or is it more discreet? Um, it's uh, it typically it'll, it'll surround the perimeter, but it is going to be you know when it's in those locations, um, it is going to be a little bit to the discretion of the marine contractor. You know, there's part of it that's you know already pretty rocky. They'll put it in the sandy areas um, around those blocks to ensure that we're actually creating good habitat. So there's habitat in that area right now. Yes. So these areas are typically. Um, um, comprised of fish habitat is is derived from our lidar data. Um, so when you know they flew a plane over, shot lasers down, um, we determined what the substrates were on the bottom of the lake. In these areas that are marked uh, feeding cover habitat, typically it'll be an entire area that's marked as that. But really, when you get discreetly within those areas, it's not um, fully rock cobble. Um, and in this area, it's not fully rock cobble. So they will. Uh, be filling in those areas to, to create additional habitat. And the LIDAR resolution 
can pick that up. Um, so the LIDAR resolution picks up the original substrate base, what's there yeah. today. And um, when, as a condition of this permit, um, the marine contractor will document with underwater photos the fish habitat mitigation that was placed on the lake bottom. Is this a standard method for mitigation? Um, this is one of the methods that we uh, commonly see. The other methods we typically see are proposed as a, like a rock pyramid yeah. um, or um, even just, you know, a, a, a eight inch to 12 inch layer of rock spread over the base. Um, mm -hmm. Those have all been accepted in the past okay. as appropriate mitigation. And then do we have any sense from an evaluation, you know, post-construction is one more effective than the other? Um, you know, there's yeah. not, we, we, we basically, um, from the EIS and from the, the studies that that was based on, really just say that the habitat, they want, the, the mitigation is required and we need to see comparable habitat. Um, we don't typically require a fish habitat study as part of these, so there's not, you know, overly burdensome on the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of the, you know, requirements of the EIS uh, for the shoreline plan is that we continually monitor the impacts, the TRP as a whole, continually monitor the impacts, uh, the new buoy blocks, new piers, those kind of things have um, to uh, to fish habitat and to adjust if, there, if there's something that's found that's not effective. Good. Yeah, I presume that's going to be something that would be in, in the regular threshold update reports? Correct. Okay. And Matt, whose uh, pier is that that's adjacent to the south side of the uh, property 007? Um, that is the pier for Tahoe Marina uh, Owners Association. Okay. Same as the uh, applicant for the buoys. Correct. All right. Very good. Thank you. And um, Ms. Prisco, we, I, I know we already have you on the line. Any other comments? No other comments. We're in support of staff's recommendation. Thank you. Did we receive any public comment on this? Uh, we did not receive any public comment. Okay. At this point, I will open the public hearing. I don't have any further questions for the, our staff or the applicant. I'll ask Jessica to look for a show of hands of anyone who's participating today who would like to provide public comment on this matter. Jessica? So if any member of the public would like to address the hearings officer on this item, please raise your hand now by clicking on the raise hand at the bottom of your Zoom screen or by dialing star nine if you've joined on your telephone. I see no hands. Very good. Seeing as we have no additional public comment to be offered on this item, I will close the public hearing and take action on the project. Based on the information that's contained in our staff report, including the proposed findings and the rationale on which they are based, and this does include a FONSI that was based on the initial environmental checklist that was submitted with the application. This includes the required findings under Chapter 4, Chapter 66, Chapter 80, and the draft conditions that are in the permit, the draft permit as well. I will make the findings, and we'll make, including the FONSI, and uh, approve the project, including the draft permit as it's been proposed. Thank you, everyone. That completes our public hearing items for today. We'll move on to item six, which is adjournment. I wanna thank everyone who's on the line today for participating, and we will stand adjourned.